had the great pleasure of watching In the Fade, which uh, is a really gut-wrenching film, but <laughs> was really beautiful. And I wanted to know how it sort of came about, because I read an interview with the director, Fatih Akin, am yeah. I saying his name right? Mm -hmm. And he said that he first encountered you at Con like years ago where you were emceeing a party or something and he said that you just had a great energy about you <laughs> and he remembered you so when he was coming up with this uh, story idea he thought about you. So what was like the timeline for that from like when you first met him and then he talked to you about the movie role? So I was actually a jury member at the Cannes Film Festival um, and uh, I'm originally from Germany but I left 25 years ago and I've been really wanting to make a German film, you know, in German, my, my mother tongue. And I grew up with Fatih's movies in, in Germany. And so I knew he had a, a film, a documentary in a parallel selection. So I went to his party uh, really to meet him because I'd never met him. And I, you know, and I said, listen, I would love to make a film with you. I, you're my hero. If you have anything, please, you know, remember me. And he kind of did, it took five years, but eventually he called me and he sent me the script. And, um, you know, you've seen the film. I was, I was really scared when I read the script. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure really if I could do it, if I had the strength, you know, to go through all of this. Um, and uh, it, it took a long time. He sort of requested that I prep the film for a really long time. So was the script uh, pretty close to what we see in the final version of the movie, or did you work on, on the story together uh, a bit with, in terms of developing your character or changing certain things? Because when I was watching the movie, I thought maybe it might have been directed by a woman because there were so many things that I loved about it, and mm. it didn't uh, you know, disappoint me in, in a lot of... I'll, I'll go into it. <laughs> But I, for some reason, I thought the director was a woman because it was just so nice that there wasn't the... A rounded character for a female protagonist. Well, yeah. yeah, and then even the way it was shot, like, I didn't feel like there was um, that whole issue of, like, the male gaze because, obviously, mm -hmm. you're a very lovely woman. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you could uh, kind of go overboard in, the, in that, that way, but it, that didn't happen, so it was really nice and to find out that he was... The director was a man, yeah. and he's from Turkey, and yeah. yeah. He often has really strong female protagonists. Um, he originally wrote this uh, film for a man, and then I think when he met me and he was struggling to really get the story tied up, um, he changed it to, to a female, and, and that's kind of when he started writing it for me, but the script was pretty much there. I mean, we adapted a little bit, um, you know, once we really got into creating the character and what she would look like. Um, I prepped for many, many months and met with a lot of victims, uh, not necessarily of terrorism, but um, uh, murder, really brutal murder, you know, families that have lost children or family members. And, and that's really what it took for me to be able to play this, because I don't even have kids, you know. Um, but I think, I mean, you know, the, the more you spend time and have the time, to really um, allow yourself to be submerged um, by other people's experiences and just allow yourself to feel. You know, I was really desperately trying to find the truth in this character that, that was so far away from anything I'd ever experienced. Es gab eine Explosion. Fahren Sie weiter. Mein Mann hat sein Büro gleich da vorne. So what was that? like for you, because for my character, I, um, she's an amputee, and I had an amputee consultant who was also yeah. uh, a below the knee, left leg amputee, and I went to her rehabilitation center where she did her physical therapy, and when I first got there, there was definitely a lot of trepidation on my part mm -hmm. about entering the space and being there with people who actually were, uh, you know, had disabilities and were there to do actual real work. Yeah. And I felt like I was invading their space mm -hmm. a little bit. So what was that like for you for the first um, maybe couple of uh, families or, or individuals that you spoke to about their experience? Because that's such a, a personal yeah. thing. Um, was it difficult? Was it tricky? How did you? Yeah, it's it's a very difficult thing. I went to a lot of um, sort of um, help self help groups. You mm -hmm. know, sat in, or they allowed me to sit in, because I needed to witness um, you know different stages of grief. 
since the movie spans quite a long time. But really what I took away from it, and I don't know how you felt, because um, yours is more precise about a disability, what I took away from being able to observe is not so much their individual stories, because they're all equally terrible, but it is, there's a certain energy, there's a certain um, feeling about people who have lost something that they will never be able to get back in their lives, no matter what they do, will never be the same. That's what I really took away from it, this terrible sense of, I, there's nothing I can do to change the outcome, and how can I possibly go on, you know, living? Steht in der Polizeiakte, dass wir was bei dir gefunden. These are my friends. Have you seen them? I don't know these people. Kennen Sie das? Nein, auf keinen Fall. Das ist das hier für ein Symbol auf dem Banner. Bring dich doch nur in Schwierigkeiten. Um, how was that for you, trying to, you know, reenact a disability? Well, it. it um I took a lot of videos of okay. it just so that I, I had the muscle memory of it in my body. I wore this, um, an apparatus that they call an eye leg that they use that the physical therapy students okay. who are training to become um, therapists, they use it on themselves so that they can feel what it feels like for their patients when they're asking them to do all of these exercises and just actually how frustrating and difficult that it is to, to do simple daily actions that we've come to take for granted. Like it was sort of starting to, I, I learned how to walk again, basically. Uh -huh, yeah. And I, I started off between two rails and she just wanted me to walk in a straight line, but you're so off balance, you know, you're on this thing. I had my knee, um, uh, my calf bent behind uh -huh. and I was on this, uh, this eye leg and it, it was, it was it must a, have been difficult. A, a, a very, jarring sort of feeling you carry that with you on set the muscle memory of yeah. it of, of of how that changes your anatomy my consultant was a nurse so she was able to just explain things to me in a very clinical and medical mm -hmm. way and it just felt um uh we didn't really get into the emotional aspect of it which was a little bit easier um just to to focus on the physicality of it yeah how did you come to this film I was a huge Alexander Payne fan. Yeah, and I've I, met him. He was on my jury <laughs> when I was in Cannes, actually. He's so I know he's a lovely the guy. The nicest yeah. and the funnest, and uh, has such a great uh, sense of humor. And you think he's oh, he's just like a, a square guy from Omaha. I mean, he is sort of <laughs> in certain ways, but he's also really funny. And, and um, I I wanted to read his script because I was just curious what he was working on next. I had read a short description of it that it was a sci-fi satire and that sounded so unusual yeah. for Alexander Payne because he usually does right. these very contained stories yeah. that are typically set in Omaha. Yeah. So I read it and I didn't know that there was going to be a role in there for an Asian mm. female. So I was really shocked. So what, did he, al he always <laughs> wanted it to be? It was always an Asian woman, right. yeah. So I know, I've seen the movie, so um, I, as I met you last night, I, I was surprised. I thought I came would, over and I introduced yeah, myself. Yeah, <laughs> you came over, which I'm glad you did. Um, but you look so different in the film, and uh, you have a, a really strong accent I in do. the film. So I, I actually thought you were going to, you know, you're from somewhere else. <laughs> but you were, um, you were born in, in America? Um, my parents were Vietnamese refugees, okay. and they left Vietnam and ended up in a refugee camp in Thailand, and that's actually where I was born. Okay. And then we had a sponsor family in New Orleans, just a random Vietnamese family. We weren't related to them. And we came to New Orleans and lived with them for the first year or two that they, we were in the U.S. When I little girl, my father, he take me, my sister, go see butterfly. Near my village, they live in the tree. You know, they fly cold place to hot place every year. So um, once you read the script, were you invited to audition or how, how did you get this part basically? I called my manager and I was like, there's a huge role in here for an Asian woman. Well, you <laughs> called the manager? <laughs> Oh, wow. The system really works, huh? Well, you know the saying that, you know, they take 10%, but you do 90% of the work. So I'm just kidding. They're great. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I uh, asked if 
this, the draft that I read was maybe four years old because they, Alexander Payne and Jim Taylor wrote the script 10 years ago. Okay. So it's been in the works for a while and the script that I read was, four, was, was dated four years prior and I wanted to know if there had been any changes, maybe the character didn't exist anymore and it was still in the script and it was specifically Vietnamese mm. so I, I was like, wow. You know, it was written for me. <laughs> it was written for me, and it's one of those weird roles where I felt like my whole life has been a preparation for this role, mm -hmm. which I never feel about it's anything. It's funny you ever. say that. I feel that about my film as well. You know, that every once in a while you read a script, where, and it comes to you at a, the right time yeah. in your career, in your life, where you feel like, okay, I'm ready to take this yeah. on. I'm going to do anything I can to get this part. Yeah, I think you said in an interview, if I had gotten this role like five years ago, I yeah. wouldn't have been able to do it. Right. Why do you think that is just like life experiences or? Part, part of it, um, I think um, a certain maturity of, um, of, of understanding maybe people a little bit better, mm -hmm. um, you know, bringing more to the table yourself because you've lived more. Um, Empathy, I think, is a big, a big yeah. thing. Not that younger people don't have empathy, but I think, uh, I think when you get older, you um, maybe realize the value of things a little bit more. You know, yeah. of life and people in your life. Yeah. You know, and just you begin to realize that life is so complicated and yeah. that issues are so complicated. Yeah. What I liked about in the fade was that at the end, there was closure, but I didn't feel good about anything. Yeah. I just. There's no good ending to that story. No, so I no, agree. and and that's that's the way it is usually. With uh, you know, if when I was younger, I, I think I had a different idea about revenge or like getting mm -hmm, back exactly. or what would make me feel satisfied. And then when you get older, you realize those are not the things. Exactly, that, that no, exactly make you. right. You know, and I like that in the film as well. You see all the possibilities of grief. You know, you mm -hmm. can um, commit suicide but that's not an option, you know, or maybe there's even the, uh, the possibility of starting a new life, you know, having another child and a new relationship and all those things that must run through someone's head, you know, are really well done in, the, in this film. But um, so, to, uh, sorry, to go back, tell me how you, so you, did you audition or? Did oh, you, yeah. I know, I'm sorry, like I'm like I'm jumping I'm really back bad at telling stories. <laughs> no, so am I, by the way, but. <laughs> I auditioned for uh, John Jackson, uh, Alexander Payne's longtime casting okay. director, and he put me on tape. This was right before Thanksgiving, around this time in November, and he told me I wasn't going to hear anything for like two months until oh. after the new year. And I thought that made sense. You know, the holidays are coming up. No big <laughs> deal. I'll, I'll sit back and just wait for two months. I heard two days later that Alexander saw my tape and that he wanted to meet me. He was going to fly down from Toronto. Mm -hmm. We had coffee and, and talked, and not even about the movie. He just wanted to know who I was as a person, and that's kind of who Alexander is. He likes yeah. to know who the people he's working with, uh, where they come from sure. and, and how they grew up. And just, uh, you know, I think the, the good directors are just, um, they just hire people that their gut tells them I is agree. right. Yeah. And um, they let you just kind of be and, and do what you need to do without too much meddling because, you know, that can also screw really mess with your head. You up, yeah. yeah. Um, How much do you hate auditioning? <laughs> no, because I, I was, I'm curious because I always feel like it's such a terrible thing to actually audition, you know? Um, do you have to audition very much anymore? I feel like you don't. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I sometimes, you know, sometimes for things that I really, really want mm -hmm. or that somebody doesn't see you in. Right, yeah. It's, I, you want to audition, Right, I guess. yeah. Um, but I just, I remember so many terrible stories about auditioning, you know. Mm -hmm. I had a director once who shall go unnamed. Um, I had to learn like 15 pages of dialogue. It was like a monologue in a film, right? Like really, really long monologue, difficult lines. And um, the, the audition was in this um, hotel. And, there were, you know, as you know, there's like 10 people in the room. So I start the, the monologue and uh, his cell phone starts ringing, right? Mm. Like in the middle of it. So obviously it rings twice, three times, he picks it up, doesn't say, oh, oh I'm sorry, right? He just looks at it and he goes, okay, so start again, you know. So I start again. And the phone rings again. Like, he didn't turn it off. And he picks it up and he was like, he went like this. And he goes, 
Yeah, no, I'm in a thing right now. I'll call you right back. No, don't worry. Yeah, we can have we can have dinner wherever you want. Like literally, he was like making dinner plans, and um, he said, "Okay, I'll s go ahead." You know, uh, sorry, start again. And I did, and the phone rang again, and I didn't even let him answer it. I just like got my stuff and left. Oh, good and that's for you. so disrespectful, <laughs> right? I mean, good screw for you. him. So that was my worst auditioning experience. Oh, you. Um, I've never had that happen to me, but I guess most of my bad ones happened earlier on yeah, in my that career. Was Not even for jobs that you care about, and that's the kicker, that you didn't even care about the job very mm. much in the first place, but you just, you know, had this feeling of humiliation. I was in a commercial audition with like five other women and we were dressed in like little you know secretary pencil skirts oh and you know looked very cute and dainty and um i asked the guy who was running the audition uh where our eye line should be and uh he said uh uh, uh raise your hand <laughs> no and i was like uh, uh, but seriously where's our eye line <laughs> He said, raise your hand. He said, uh, 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 raise your hand. Um, Whoa. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it, what was also disappointing was that the other ladies just giggled. And I was like, why, why are we laughing about this? This is terrible. I like how polite you are. It was also disappointing. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> how do you say butterfly in Vietnamese? Gong bong. Gong bong? So you started off as a model mm -hmm. and then transitioned into acting and uh, your director Fatih Akin also brought that up in this interview that I read where a lot of people have underestimated you or, or not seen you as a serious actress <laughs> and, and uh, haven't really had a lot of confidence in, in your abilities and I'm sure once people see in the fade that will uh, dispel any any of that. So is this more in line of what you would like to do uh, moving forward with other projects, mm. other films, or, or where would you like to go from well, here? Well, I don't know how you feel about things like that, but I think so many actors or careers are really made out of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So um, we are all guilty of preconceived notions of you know, who you are, who I am, of where we come from, what our abilities are. And so often you don't get the opportunity to actually, you know, play or mm -hmm. act in, in a role or in a, in a movie that will actually show your range because people like to typecast you, whether you like it or not. And that's not just in the movie industry, you know. So I would say um, I'm extremely grateful that a director took a risk on me. Mm -hmm. I mean... I didn't see it as a risk but to him, to him. We never see it as a risk. No, you know, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think um, um, I'm not sure that um, I, I would have been on the top of the list for, for actresses being considered for that role if this was an American film, you know. Mm. So I don't know how you feel about that, but um, for yourself, I'm sure there's so many less roles for, great roles for. Right, I mean, there, it, there is is the distinction between quantity of roles and quality exactly. of roles. Exactly. And with the discussion that's going on about diversity and mm -hmm. inclusivity, those things are getting better. And I feel like in the next five years, the, you know, the machinery will catch up to the uh, so sort of the social agenda mm -hmm. that, that people are pushing right now. Um, but then there's just as an individual what you respond to, the materials that you respond to. And what was so nice about Downsizing was that it's a movie that weaves together topics and ideas that I personally care about. And I didn't look at it as just a job or an opportunity right. or just like, oh, it's a lead role. It's a big role. Yes. It was also something that I really believed in that and that yeah. I cared about whether I was in it or not. I just yeah. loved the story. Right and love the character. But I think that sets performances apart as well. I think when you have a personal connection mm -hmm. um, to a character, even just the story, it, it will, it'll make the film more rich and I think it more rele relevant. Yeah. Because there's so much else coming to the role than just 
somebody saying lines and showing up for work. Yeah. I definitely feel about that, like that about in the fade, yeah. I love it when you feel like you're needed in mm -hmm. something, not that you could play the role, but it's like there's a need for you. Yeah and a purpose for you being there. So whatever that is, I, I, I'm not sure, but yeah. hopefully that. Well, I think you're wonderful in the film <laughs> and you really stand out, you know, you're, you're yeah. I, I can't even imagine the film without you or somebody else in it, you know, it's like one of those obvious, yeah, I know, and you surprised me, like I said, when I met you last night, I was like, wait, that's you? You, you know, you changed so much in that character. Yeah.